the egoholics. Today's message is one I wish everyone could hear. A minister friend of mine once told me ego, E-G-O, stands for edge God out, and nothing truer was ever said. Good morning, folks. Thank you for joining us for part six of God's Prozac meaning only in him alone will we find real joy. With that said, I am so glad you have taken your valuable time to be with us. Friend, for those of you who have missed the first part of this series, please take the time to go to TroyWilson.com and catch up with the rest of us. It's absolutely free of charge, and I am certain you will be glad you did. Today, I must take you back with my time with Houston Police Department. It was my first law enforcement job, and it was there I saw both immoral and illegal behavior by a select few of egoholic cops. Notice I said a few. In the late 70s, and early 80s, money, drug money, was flowing through the border states like somebody had opened the floodgates to the U.S. Mint. Drug raids by Houston Police Department would often uncover large garbage bags crammed full of U.S. $100 bills, not the neatly bound bundles of cash we see on TV. Cops who illegally partook of this free-flowing money were easy to spot. Even though at the time, Houston was the highest paid police force in the country, a cop's pay just didn't support the lifestyle some of these bad boys were living. Take, for instance, a new Porsche in the garage, a new home in an upscale neighborhood, a mansion. One dummy even bragged about owning a yacht and having it in a slip down in Galveston, Texas. Then there were the honey bunnies. I once had a crime boss tell me he could buy any man with either drugs, money, or a pretty woman. I don't believe his statement applies to all men, but I do know these three things greatly appeal to egoholics, cops or otherwise. The chaplain for the Houston Police Department was rather a large man, even bigger than I am, and that's to put it nice. Probably in his 50s, his once receding hairline had receded back about as far as it was gonna go. He had earned the rank of captain. Captain Muller was given the assignment of teaching ethics to the trainees at the Houston Police Academy, one of the best academies in the world. A fitting subject, though, seeing that Captain Muller was also a chaplain. It was during his presentation or lectures, Captain Muller had this to say. Men, with all the other temptations, everyone in this room will also be approached by the honey bunnies. It's not that you've gotten better looking since becoming a cop. Some ladies find police officers like myself, he said, are just more approachable. The entire class broke out into laughter. What? The captain responded. There are a lot of older, large-sized honey bunnies also. Captain Muller's humor was well, and he had also gotten the full attention of our class. Honey bunnies, he continued, are looking for a man. Sorry to leave you women out on this, but I don't know any honey jackrabbits, but maybe there are some now. Honey bunnies are looking for a man who possess three things. One, Low self-confidence. They can build your confidence with a pretty woman now. It's why a lot of cops, though, become cops. Because they believe wearing a uniform along with a gun and badge will give them more self-confidence. Number two, honey bunnies are looking for a married man most of the time. Married men are discreet and give honey bunnies more freedom to live separate lives, to do as they please when they please. Nothing can be said about it. Some of the honey bunnies had more than one sugar daddy cop. Lastly, honey bunnies are looking for a steady influx of support money. Now, not all cops with honey bunnies on the side are on the take. Some work second jobs, yeah, such as security at the local bank or parking lot. There are a few things I would like to leave you with, Captain Muller concluded. Statistics show three out of five cops' marriages 
end in divorce. Now, you fellas think about that, especially you thinking about becoming a cop. Suicide rates are the highest among cops and former military. Lastly, over half of retired cops suffer from some form of depression. Now, folks, let's take a quick look at how all of this compares to what the Bible has to say. King David gave way to his ego when he sought to become intimate with Bathsheba. We will find his story in its entirety in 2 Samuel. Please read it if you have not done so. However, because we are limited on time, let me just read one verse. Please listen. 2 Samuel 3. And David sent and inquired after the woman. And one said, It's not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. Folks, back in that day, it was common for men to have several wives. Not only several wives were common, but also a man was allowed as many concubines as he deemed necessary. Concubine defined as refer to a sexual partner of secondary status. They didn't have wife status. Still, with all of these women at his beckoning call, David's ego led him to believe Bathsheba would be the ultimate intimate experience. One he must have at any cost. After his simple deeds became known to his best friend Nathan, God sent Nathan to confront David. We can read it in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1. This is just part. And the Lord sent Nathan to David. Friend, this story has a tragic ending which encompassed a lot more people than just David and Bathsheba. Sin does not restrict itself to a vacuum. It hurts everyone who is connected to the person who committed the sin. Now think about that. It is when King David's sins were brought to light and he found himself naked before God, naked meaning with no excuse or defense. It is in these two short verses of what David cried out to God, I want to use for comparison in today's message. Let's read it. Psalm 51, 11, and 12. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Neighbor, the Holy Bible tells us God will not look upon sin. First part of Habakkuk 1.13 tells us this. Thou art of pure eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Friend, this does not mean God does not know about our sins. However, if we look back to what King David said, the Holy Spirit of God and sin will not be contained in the same vessel. Without the Holy Spirit, one may experience a brief moment of happiness, but continuous joy is missed, and it will stay missing until we repent. Let me conclude with this explanation. The word depression has many different origins. One meaning is to be pressed down. Another reads, and pay attention to this one, to be deprived of. If you are living in sin, my friend, you are deprived of the only thing which makes life worth living, His Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for providing us with an antidote to our egos, and that is to become filled with your Holy Spirit. We praise your holy name for the joy of which you have instilled in us through the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask, dear God, if there's one here today who doesn't know the renewal and joy your Holy Spirit can bring, May they form a relationship with your son, Jesus Christ, at this very moment. It is in his holy name we pray, amen and amen.